Hey guys, welcome to another installment of Ask Dr. Mike. This time, all of the questions are coming from you. So I'm really excited to answer all of your questions. Let's get to it. Got a question, I just recently got my wisdom teeth taken out, and I have four huge holes in my mouth. How can I get them to close as quick as possible? Getting your wisdom teeth taken out is definitely a painful experience. I had all four of mine taken out. And they were all impacted. It really did hurt, so I feel you. There is no secret way to speed up the healing process. The best thing that you can do is prevent infection. By keeping the area clean. Really, what's the number one thing? That you shouldn't do is smoke. Smoking does prolong healing time. And that's the number one thing. That we talk to our patients during surgeries is that they should stop smoking as soon as possible. So I just found out that I'm gluten intolerant. Can you explain what is gluten intolerance? Why it can happen, and what is the effect to my body if I still consume gluten? Can I eat like one, two, three, four, or five small bites for a treat for myself? Is it dangerous? Thanks Dr. Mike. Bella, gluten intolerance is a very popular subject right now, but the way that I like to break it down to my patients is that there's two types of gluten issues. One is celiac disease, you've heard about it in the news. And celiac disease is actual damage in your intestines from eating gluten, which is a protein byproduct of wheat. In celiac disease, when you consume wheat, your body has an autoimmune response, which means that your own body attacks its own cells because of an overreaction to the wheat product. And you get physical damage in your intestines. Now, the second part of this is something called non-celiac wheat sensitivity. There's people that are sensitive to wheat, but not necessarily to the gluten component. In non-celiac wheat sensitivity, we don't have the research to back up what happens if you continue eating wheat. However, my opinion, you should not eat wheat because it's going to make you feel better. And you'll be in less of a fog. You'll have less diarrhea, less bloating. So if you do have symptoms from eating wheat, just don't eat it. Okay, that's a great question phase. And it really does give strength to the statement that you can die of too much of anything. So yes, you can die of taking too much water. Because you limit your body's ability to properly manage the electrolytes within your system. Electrolytes are crucial for managing everyday life functions, like making your brain work, your heart work, or even your kidneys. What do you recommend for people with IBS? Because we both worry about our intestines on a daily basis. Thanks Dr. Mike. Hey girls, if you do have IBS and it's true, treatment depends on which type of IBS you have. There's IBS that's mostly diarrhea predominant. There's IBS constipation predominant. And there's also a mixed version as well. For mild disease or symptoms you can do. Some dietary modifications. There's a specific diet that we put patients on. Who suffer from IBS, called a FODMAP diet. What that diet does is it excludes certain foods. That your body's unable to digest. And the bacteria in your stomach are able to digest. So it causes that uncomfortable bloating feeling, pain. And it really does mess with your bowel movements. If you're able to eliminate those types of foods, people do see an improvement in their symptoms. If you do have a moderate or severe form of the illness, there are medications that you can use to treat your illness. However, in order to get those medications and to find out what medications are suited best for your symptoms, it's important to go see your doctor. Hi Dr. Mike, my question for you is, how can I improve my eczema? because none of the products that my dermatologists have recommended towards me or pretty much anything that I've been attempting to doing hasn't really worked that well. What can I do myself, like involving nutrition or stuff that I can kinda control that's not super financially expensive? Eczema's a very tricky illness and I understand your frustration. If you've already seen a dermatologist, they've probably discussed some of the treatment options with you. Talking about UV light therapy, steroid creams, maybe even medications that affect your immune system. But like you said, those are expensive modifications. 
Expensive treatments. Some of them do come with side effects. Links between eczema flares and diet. Has been a popular subject that's been up for debate. It's not clear what the link is. But we certainly know that a link does exist. I don't like recommending to my patients. Eliminating certain foods from their diets. But this is a great time to have a conversation. With your dermatologist or your primary care doctor. To get tested for food allergies. Because there is a relationship. In those who have food allergies. To those who have worsening eczema. If you're able to find out early on. That you have a food allergy and you're able. To eliminate that specific food from your diet. It's possible that your eczema flares will decrease. Or at least that when they do happen, they won't be as bad. Hey Dr. Mike, my question for you is. How and when did you know which area of medicine you wanted to specialize in? I chose family medicine specifically. Because I love continuity of care. I love being able to communicate with my patients every single day. And also I love not limiting myself to focusing on one specific body part or organ. I think the beauty of family medicine lies in that I'm able to see the effect my treatment has on my patient. I'm able to see how it improves their lives. And that's incredibly rewarding. Hi Dr. Mike, I'm involved in a lot of sporting activities, and I tend to sprain my ankles when I play sports. I was wondering if there is anything that I can do to help strengthen my ankles, like an exercise. That way I won't hurt them as much as I do. Hey Anna, the way that you prevent ankle injuries is through improving your proprioception, which is your body's ability to know where your limbs are at all times, even without seeing them. The best way to strengthen your ankle and prevent injuries is to do proprioception exercises. The first one that I want all my patients to try is to stand on one foot, of course without a sneaker, with their hands to their sides, eyes open, and see how long they could hold that position. Then to make the exercise a little harder, you can take your arms and put them at your sides, which will make it, the balancing a little more difficult. And then the next part, very challenging, is to do the same thing with your arms, at your sides, but close your eyes, and see how long you can hold that position. The longer you can hold that position, the less likely you are to have an ankle injury. You can certainly see your physical therapist who will teach you more advanced exercises and work with you directly to prevent future injuries. I see, over and over again, people claiming that vitamin D is the cure-all for all illnesses. And clearly, it's not the case. There's been a huge uproar and uptick in studies and articles coming out recently saying that Americans are taking too much vitamin D now. I've said this maybe two months ago. In a YouTube video called Are Vitamins Fake News? Check out that video and see the real deal on vitamin D. I would like it if you could explain to people why asthma has many different levels. Why some people find one puff with an inhaler will help them and other people with severe asthma like myself need nebulizers and oxygen therapy because I feel like people still take asthma as a bit of a joke and they seem to think that people with asthma are hypochondriacs and things. I've spent many times in ICU, I've been critically ill. I've had pleurisy, I've had many things. And I've been told by friends. You know, if you're gonna be making that noise, can you go home, cause you're annoying me. I've been asked if I could be quiet. And so, if you could maybe feature this and answer the question, that would be amazing. And I would really appreciate it because I feel like I'm talking to a brick wall. When I try to explain to people, coming from a doctor, it might be better. Thanks, Mike. First of all, to all those who said, asthma's a joke, they are completely wrong. They don't know what they're talking about. And I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Asthma's a very serious illness. And I've had to intubate otherwise healthy 16 year olds with the illness. There are levels to asthma, you have mild asthma, moderate asthma, and severe asthma. There's further classifications. But that's for your doctor to worry about. And the difference between the levels of asthma is the difference between the types of medications you need to take. So for the more severe asthma, you're gonna need to take controller medications. 
wants to prevent asthma 